Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Cher Snyder, and it's my privilege to call to order the 2021 OLLI at UGA annual meeting. We hope you'll enjoy the program we have planned for you this afternoon, and we are recording it for the viewing pleasure of those unable to attend. Please make sure your microphones are mm -hmm. muted so that everyone can hear without distraction. Let's begin our program by inviting Dean Denise Spangler from the Mary Frances Early College of Education at UGA to introduce our keynote speaker. Dean Spangler became an ex officio member of OLLI at UGA's Executive Committee and Board of Directors in early 2017 and is an OLLI member as well. We appreciate her ongoing commitment to lifelong learning and look forward to her continued involvement in OLLI in the years to come. Welcome Dean Spangler. Thank you, Cher. Um, and before I introduce our keynote speaker, I just want to applaud Ali for the way you handled the pivot during COVID. Um, the staff, the board leadership, the members have all just been an exemplar, I think, for the university and the community of ways to remain engaged, but to do so safely. So I know you're all looking forward to getting back um, to more normal operations, but I just really appreciate the job everybody did um, making sure that Ali could still happen during, during COVID. So it's now my pleasure to introduce my uh, friend and colleague, Ron Severo. He is professor and deputy director of the Center for Health Professions Education at the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland, an organization that I did not even know existed until he went there. Prior to his move to USU, he held a variety of leadership positions at the University of Georgia, including serving as head of the Department of Lifelong Education Administration and Policy, Associate Dean for Outreach and Engagement in the College of Education, and then as Associate Vice President for Instruction. Dr. Severo is an expert in adult education with a focus on health professions education. He's published extensively in health professions education with special emphasis on continuing professional development. And he's given numerous invited speeches in various venues, including the National Center for Disaster Medicine and Public Health, Harvard's Medical School, Vanderbilt's Medical School, the Marine Corps Universities, University Health and Human Services Bureau of Health Professions and the Medical Association of Georgia. He's a consulting editor for the Journal of Continuing Education and Health Professions, and he was extensively involved in health professions education at UGA, where he founded and served as co-director of the Institute for Evidence-Based Health Professions Education, was the co-PI for Georgia's Public Health Training Center, and served for seven years as the educational consultant for the Augusta University UGA Medical Partnership to strengthen the school's teaching, curriculum development, and educational research projects. And some of his colleagues are continuing to carry that work on today. So I will turn it over to Iran, and we look forward to what you have to say today. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Denise. And uh, it is, uh, I have to say, so wonderful to be back with you. Some of you uh, are friends, and I've seen you um, over time, and some of you are new. Uh, it is especially exciting to see Ali thriving and uh, the really terrific relationship with the College of Ed and the university um, continue to be intact. And I, and I know Denise has been a fantastic uh, partner on that. Um, as she and I partnered on many, many uh, projects and uh, activities during our time together in the College of Education. So um, I thought I'd make some brief remarks, uh, first of all, about you know, why I think Ali is really so important. Um, to each of you and uh, to the university. Uh, I wanna spend a little time uh, reflecting on what the history of OLLI at UGA teaches us. Um, I think there's some important lessons there uh, moving forward. And finally, um, uh, Tim asked me to talk a little bit about remote learning and, 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 and you know, Denise just mentioned that you all made a pivot back in March as, as all of us have had to do. Uh, and just reflect a little bit about um, what, what, we, what we've been doing and what that might mean for the future. Um, I, you know, I titled uh, this talk, um, you know, the Ali at Lifelong, uh, Ali at UGA, animated by the spirit of lifelong learning. And it's really that spirit that, uh, you know, I saw from the very beginning of when I started to work with Ali, uh, really 20 years ago. Uh, in 2001. And um, what always struck me is that Ali was member originated and you've all sustained it. 
And I like to, I know I talked to um, the folks that were starting this uh, when we became Ollie, um, that you all are just friends teaching friends. You take responsibility for your own learning. Um, and so this, light, this spirit of lifelong learning uh, that, that, is, that is animating your organization is not only about continuing to learn and grow and develop, which we know we all do across the lifespan, but I think the really other important uh, dimension of this is the social and the community building that you know, we all get to feel a part of something bigger than ourselves. And, and I know that Ali, uh, LIR and then Ali um, following that was, was always an, many times an attraction for people moving uh, to the area. Uh, in Athens because, you know, you're all so welcoming and uh, was a place to start if you didn't know anybody. So I think this, this social and community dimension is, is critical. And, and, I, and I have to also mention how, how important Ali is uh, uh, to UGA. I mean, you know, UGA is, as you all know, is a land grant university. Our, our mission has always been uh, to be part of the state uh, and to serve the state and all of its citizens. And so um, I think it was natural that this partnership formed between LIR and then eventually Ali um, and, and to be part of that mission of, of UGA, it's, it's critical. Um, I'd like to, you know, as I mentioned, I've had a 20 year history with, with the organization and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today because it gave me a chance to just reflect on, on that history. And um, I, 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 I came up with, uh, with, with at least my experience of this, uh, that I really see three phases uh, in this symbiotic relationship between UGA and the College of Ed especially and, and Ali. And I think what you'll see is in these few remarks I'm gonna make is that this animating spirit of lifelong learning really spurred all of the transitions um, across the phases and continues to do so uh, today. So let me first start with the initial phase. Um, what I would say is from 1994 to 2001, which was really the origins of the learning and retirement program that partnered with the Georgia Center. And so, um, you know, the, the, the seed of this was that there were a small group of community leaders interested in expanding services for older citizens. And uh, they met together and they planned an organization that would become learning and retirement. They did that within the context of, of the Georgia Center. But, but what's really important about how, how the organization started, it did not start as a program from the Georgia Center. It started because of this animating spirit that your predecessors had to continue to learn. And so, uh, you know, the first classes were then organized in 94. I think there was about 100 members at that time. Uh, the organization then used these, you probably, many of you have heard of Elder Hostel, which is another um, a program, national program serving older adults. And, and some of those guiding principles for Elder Hostel, Elder Hostel were picked up uh, by LIR. And so, so that's the first phase and, I, and, and you see how important this uh, animating spirit is there. And then uh, the, your, your, your predecessors, the members of LIR decided that they wanted to make a switch uh, out of the Georgia Center for a number of reasons. And they, um, they contacted the College of Education um, and somehow I'm not sure exactly how this worked but they found uh, our School of Leadership and Lifelong Learning and the Department of Education uh, that was part of that school. Uh, I was a department chair of, of adult education at that time. And um, uh, so that was, in, and, and we had just moved about three, four years before that to Rivers Crossing. And so they connected with us. Uh, we were able to secure a couple of classrooms uh, for the groups to use. Um, uh, fall, fall classes were set up, and, and this is an interesting tidbit for your history. The first registration of, um, of uh, LIR at Rivers Crossing was scheduled to occur on September 12, 2001. So, uh, you know, we had quite an event on 9-11 on the day before, but, you know, uh, the group carried on. They had the registration. President Adams said, we're going to continue. 
uh, UGA is going to open its its doors, and and they did, and you you registered people, <laughs> and uh, you know that spirit said we're not going to be stopped. You know we're going to continue to make this organization grow. Um, and then, you know that this was an organic relationship between LIR and um, and the College of Ed. Um, the College of Ed morphed, as Denise well knows, in 2005. Uh, into a smaller number of departments. So the Department of Leadership and Lifelong Learning, uh, uh, Leadership, I'm sorry, Lifelong Learning Education uh, and Policy, Administration and Policy was formed. We continued to develop our relationship. We were able to secure more rooms. Uh, we uh, had a relationship where we hired, uh, you hired a graduate assistant. So you start to see the beginning of staffing uh, for LIR at that point, and, and something really important, I, I assume you know this, but I would say, and Denise can speak to this, but I think Rivers Crossing is probably the only building on the UGA campus in which Ali could uh, survive and thrive because all of the, all of the departments in, the, in Rivers Crossing are College of Ed graduate programs. So our courses were all at night, so it was just everything worked because your courses were during the day, the rooms were sitting there empty, the College of Education and UGA thought it was a great partnership. And so you were able to use the rooms um, at no cost, which is highly unusual um, for, uh, for any Ollie of the 124 around the country. So, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's well worth noting how much of a contribution uh, the College of Ed and UGA make to, um, to making uh, Ali successful. Okay, so 2001, 2008. Um, and so I was sitting in my office one day up on the fourth floor in Rivers Crossing and three members, you know, who I knew well from, from LIR came up to me. And I can't remember for sure. I think it was John Songster and Janet Stratton and John Rudy, but, I, but there may be others who, who remember exactly. So they asked for a meeting and they said, Can, we found this, this organization called uh, Osher Foundation. And they fund um, the kind of uh, organization we are. And, um, you know, they, there's 120 around the country and they're not gonna be funding many more, maybe one or two. Do you think we could put in um, an application? I said, absolutely, it sounds like a great idea. Uh, and again, the members took the ownership, the spirit of lifelong learning would not be stopped and so, uh, we put together a proposal, the Osher Foundation accepted it. And the way they would work is that they needed to check out this organization and see if it was gonna be sustainable because mm -hmm. you now have a community organization working with a university. And so um, the way it would work is they would give you $100,000 the first year uh, to begin to uh, solidify this relationship. Um, and uh, they did another 100,000 the following year. So they had two requirements. First of all, that LIR would change its name to Ali at UGA. That had to be part of the deal. And that the funds would be managed by the university. And I think part of that was to have an organization that would never go away. The University of Georgia is likely to be there for another 200 years. So, uh, so, so the but you know, you all talked about it. The board debated this uh, very rigorously, vigorously, I would say, and they decided yes, it was worth it for the uh, for the sustainability of of LIR to make these changes. And so the board voted on this, decided to move forward. Uh, by 2010, we had enough uh, likelihood and that this was going to continue and enough funding that we hired our first full-time staff member, Katie Crapo, who probably many of you know. She started in April of 2010. And then our goal at that point was to, um, to, uh, to seek the endowment, which was critical for the, was essential really for the long-term stability of the program. And so we had to reach 500 members, which we did in 2012. Uh, the university was awarded the million dollar endowment. We reached a thousand members, which was the next benchmark in 2013. And so we got our second million dollars, which was the most 
Uh, and then, of course, the, the business model is these proceeds from the $2 million investment that was managed by the university would go toward the operating expenses um, of, um, of Ali. And so, you know, as Denise mentioned, I left in uh, December of 2016. Just, I think, uh, Denise and I believe, as I recall, Denise, that we were on the search committee uh, that hired Tim. And it's great to see Tim is still there. Uh, uh, providing the leadership. So, so that's this third phase, 2018 to the present. And, and I just, you know, again, the spirit, all driven by the members, all because uh, you wanted to continue to learn and to have this uh, community. So let me just make a couple of remarks about lifelong learning, about remote learning, I'm sorry, which uh, uh, has been quite, quite a 15 months for all of us. Um, and, and I would re reflect on this from two angles. First of all, I became a member, my wife became a member of the American University, OLLI. Um, so we've been watching that and, and taking classes first face-to-face uh, -face and of course, virtually since last March. Uh, and then also um, at the medical school here, our center uh, has a graduate program in health professions education. And so that was fully online because our, our learners are all physicians deployed around the world. Um, so we, were, we had to pivot as you did uh, to put the medical school, uh, you know, offer all the academic instruction anyway, virtually. So uh, I was responsible for leading that effort. And so, um, uh, you know, what, what uh, AU is gonna be doing in their alley in the fall, they're gonna have, um, you know, in-person only classes, Zoom only classes, hybrid classes. They're going to reopen Ollie spaces and uh, offices for the first time for staff to come back. Um, and, you know, I think, I think we all recognize we're all different now than we were 15 months ago. Uh, but I think the spirit of lifelong learning that's going to continue to animate uh, Ollie at UGA. And I think your task going forward is how to continue to optimize your learning in your community building. And, and this is the question I would pose, I'm sure you've all thought about this, is but what, what will you take forward into the future and what will you leave behind? And um, you know, you'll figure that out uh, as, a, as a team, as a group. But uh, finally, just to say, it is just wonderful to see how thriving the organization is. I never had any doubt, but it's great to see it. Uh, and just don't lose that spirit that's carried you this far. And, um, that will continue to into the future. So thanks again, uh, Tim and, and uh, Cher and everyone who's, who's given me the opportunity to, um, you know, to really reflect on, on the wonderful efforts of, uh, of you and your predecessors to build this successful program. Thank you. Well, I think we have a time for a couple of questions. If anybody has um, has any thoughts to add, I know um, Ron is on a on a very strict uh, timetable, but if you have any questions to to add, that would be great. Um, Bruce, quick question: uh, With your extensive background in just about every aspect of education, I suspect, uh, were there some things that you learned? Uh, in dealing with programs for older uh, students or older uh, learners that actually uh, may have surprised you, may have been different, uh, may have felt that they complemented uh, your other experiences in sort of useful ways? Well, that's a great question because, uh, uh, you know, this has been quite, you know, it's like a natural experiment. Uh, like who knew that we had this capacity in us to, uh, to adapt. And I think uh, to me, that's the major lesson here is that, you know, so many people, uh, you know, in my world in, in medical education, uh, in my world in kind of adult education, we're like, um, you know, the, uh, you know, that online learning stuff is fine, but you know, I'm, I'm really a, a people person. <laughs> And I get that, you know, like I, I, I uh, as probably Denise and others that know me well are, I love to teach, I love to do, I love to be in the classroom. 
But um, but what what surprised me the most, I guess, is that many people were able to adapt. Uh, it's not right for everybody uh, this type of uh, learning. But th the other thing I think it's taught us, and maybe especially uh, for older adults, I know that's true in our church, is that you know there's access issues. So like there's people that can now participate uh, and engage uh, that would not have been able to before because you know they just didn't have the bandwidth or the ability to um, you know to get places, for example, uh, or their work schedule was such or their life was so complicated, you know. So I think to me that's it's it's this resilience that uh, that we have that I have seen, and this notion of okay, so like what are we going to carry forward? You know, like, what are we going to, what's really good about this that we need to continue to do? And what, you know, what can we do without, you know, like eight hours of Zoom, we're not going to do that, you know, like, and, and there's certain things you can't do well, uh, unless you're in person. So, so to me, it's that resilience, I think that, uh, because, you know, had no, this has never happened in our lifetime, at least my lifetime. Um, and so that's, that's been the biggest, the biggest surprise for me. Thanks for that question. That's a great question. Any other questions or thoughts? Otherwise we will say thank you and continue with our meeting. Well, that's great. Thank Thanks. So much. Thanks, Tim, and thanks everyone. It's uh, uh, it's good to see everyone, and and uh, thanks, Denise, especially. It's great to see you, and and uh, all all the good things going on in the College of Education. Take care, Dr. Severo. Thank you for your passion for lifelong learning, and for sharing your inspiring words with us as our keynote speaker this year. And now, Dean Spangler, members of the board and fellow OLLI members, it's my pleasure to report to you that the state of OLLI at UGA is good, thanks to our amazing volunteers and staff. We had a busy year. Our long range strategic planning committee gave us a blueprint for strengthening the organization, and we actually accomplished many of the goals they set before us. Our bylaws and policies committee updated both of these governing documents to provide clearer guidance to OLLI members and staff. Our marketing and communications committee helped us learn more about you through member surveys and helped us choose a more attractive and effective email delivery service. Our information technology committee began to consider more user-friendly systems for our members. Our curriculum committee put together a remarkable array of online classes by presenters near and far. And our hospitality committee kept spirits up with online celebrations of Halloween, December's Jolly Ollie holiday, Valentine's Day, and St. Patrick's Day. These classes and social events, along with the many SIGs that met and thrived online, kept us engaged and provided much needed social interaction. Like many Ollies, in the first part of this fiscal year, we lost a substantial portion of our member base. But our membership committee kept in touch with many who were hesitant to renew their memberships and helped bring former members back into the fold. With fewer members, our revenue stream from dues and class fees was reduced. But with the support of our finance committee, we streamlined our budget and found a way to be made whole again with a one-time distribution from the Osher Foundation. And to top that off, our fund development committee exceeded its fundraising goal for the annual fund drive. Finally, the reentry committee planned a seven step process for returning to in-person activities. And we were excited on May 5th, after more than a year to endorse outdoor gatherings of small groups by moving to step two. That same week, you, our members, selected from a slate of candidates proposed by the nominating committee, a new president-elect and five board members whose terms, along with that of our new president, begin on July 1st. 
congratulations. I want to acknowledge the unfailing support and encouragement of the officers and members of this year's board. I couldn't have asked for a better partner this year than President-elect Don Torsivia and can't wait to see what Don and the board have in store for us in the coming year. A special thank you as well to each of our outgoing board members, Jim Alberts, Sherry Malone, and Bob Yorchik for your years of faithful service to Ollie. I also want to acknowledge each and every one of our committee chairs and SIG leaders who helped Ollie thrive during our most challenging year ever. We have especially benefited this year from the Council of Dean Denise Spangler, who has provided tremendous support and guidance on behalf of the Mary Frances Early College of Education at UGA. Denise, thank you for your encouragement. Last, but most assuredly not least, we are fortunate to have the ongoing support of the OLLI staff, whose ability to navigate the waters of the pandemic and keep OLLI afloat has been commendable. Kudos to Executive Director Tim Meehan and his staff, Shelley Magruder, Amanda Nix, Ryan Robinson, Rita Heelan, and Amy Driver-Dean for their day-to-day -day dedication and hard work. As you know, we can't spell volunteer without you. I encourage you to continue supporting Ollie in as many ways as you can as the new fiscal year unfolds. You can recruit or teach or take a class, join or chair a committee, participate in or lead a shared interest group, attend social events, and of course, make a donation to Ollie. Your support will enable you and others to count on Ollie for enrichment and engagement now and far into the future. Thank you all for all you do for Ollie. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the officers and members of the Board of Directors for fiscal year 2022. And now it's time to address approval of the minutes from the May 2020 annual meeting. The minutes for the 2020 annual meeting were prepared by Ann Schumper, our past secretary to the board. They were provided to you along with the agenda for today's meeting. Madam President, I ask that we entertain a motion to approve the minutes as they were presented. Thank you very much, Linda. Do I hear a motion, please, to accept the minutes as presented? Sherry Malone, I see you raising your hand. Thank you very I much. I shall move. <laughs> and do I have a second, please? 
Dawn Trasivia, thank you very much for the second. All in favor of accepting the minutes as approved, please signify by raising your hand. That's great, thank you very much. The minutes are approved. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Mitzoff, treasurer for Ali at UGA. I'd like to begin my presentation with a synopsis of our financial situation. Even though we've faced an extraordinarily challenging year financially, we are projecting a balanced budget for fiscal year 2021. Until just a couple of months ago, the situation wasn't as optimistic. In fact, our initial forecast was for a shortfall of $40,000. And the bar charts on this slide show the reason. We saw a huge decline in both curriculum and membership income compared to last year. Notice that the decrease in curriculum fees compared to last year is nearly $40,000 and the membership dues dropped over $30,000 for a total decrease of about $70,000 in income from the previous year. Ali at UGA does have an emergency savings account for unforeseen circumstances like the one we're in. However, it turns out that we didn't need to use our emergency savings. Instead, we were able to take advantage of the earnings on our Osher Endowment Investments. Those earnings increased by $428,000 in the first nine months of the fiscal year. So we requested a distribution of a small portion of those earnings, just $40,000 to cover the projected budget shortfall. Cher and Tim took the lead on this effort. We had Dean Spangler's support. The Osher Foundation approved the request and we received the distribution last month. So that's the story on how we went from a shortfall to a balanced budget this year. I need to one, mention one important caveat. Finishing the year with a balanced budget depends on members continuing to register for classes this month and next. So please continue to sign up. Next is a summary of our current account balances and I'll highlight just a couple of those items. In emergency cash, we have just over $41,000. This amount complies with the Ali at UGA financial policy of having at least $40,000 in emergency savings. In the Fidelity Investments, we have about $133,000. We started the year with multiple investment accounts and then consolidated them into a single account. The goal was to simplify our portfolio, yet continue to aim for the growth rate we've seen in the past. And so far, that strategy has served us very well this year. The financial outlook for next year is that we'll begin our recovery. Our gradual return to activities at Rivers Crossing will lead to growth in membership and increased participation in classes, which will in turn lead to increased income but we're still facing uncertainty, so we took a conservative approach to building the budget. Based on that approach, we're projecting a shortfall of about $8,000. Not a complete recovery, but much, much better than last year. I'd like to thank the key contributors to Ali at UGA's financial efforts, Tim and Shelley and Amy on the staff and the entire finance committee under Mamie's leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you also to members who made donations. We collected over $28,000 in donations this year and surpassed our goal by $3,400. And thank you to everyone who signed up for classes this year. Your generosity and dedication helped sustain Ali at UGA during a difficult time. Good afternoon, I'm Dawn Tercivia and I'm honored to introduce a number of Ali members who are being recognized today for their exemplary service and their dedication to our organization. Thank you to each one of you for your contribution and your commitment to Ali. You have made Ali a great organization. Thank you.
Thank you very much for coming today. I was listening to my speech from last year and reflecting on how much the world has changed since those early days of the pandemic, how much we have all given up, how much we have all taken on, and how much Ollie has changed. However, before I wax lyrical, I wanted to go through a few thank yous. Firstly, to you, the membership, for learning the new technology, taking advantage of the opportunity to learn and socialize remotely, whether you are in Vermont, Wyoming, Washington, or Watkinsville. It takes work, and sometimes it is not a perfect tool. But for those of you who have been able to embrace the change, thank you. For those of you who find it hard or near impossible, we hear you, and hopefully the work put in by the re-entry committee will mean that you are able to rejoin us soon. Secondly, to the committee chairs, thank you for continuing to work, to give us social events to look forward to, to keep our program in front of potential members, to work to put the organization on the sound of financial footing as possible, and of course, all the edifying classes that we enjoy. Thirdly, to the staff, Shelley, Amanda, Rita, Ryan, and our bookkeeper, Amy. Thank you for taking all the changes in your stride, such as moving from two semesters to five terms, placing recordings online, checking on time zone changes, and many, many other things, the list goes on. To all the unseen staff at the Mary Frances Early College of Education, finance, HR, development, communications, who do so much for us. To William, the Rivers Crossing IT guru, who recently left to take up another position across campus. You will be missed. And of course, to Dean Spangler, without whose support, we would not be able to achieve so much. To our sponsors, who stuck by us in uncertain times, thank you. It is always good to know that we have the support of the community. But in the end, this is an organization run by the members for the members. And as we return to normal operations, I look forward to seeing you around Rivers Crossing, maybe sometime in the next few months. However, if you do prefer to stay on Zoom, I look forward to seeing you in a class or maybe even a committee meeting some point in the future. Thank you. Six members of OLLI at UGA passed during the last year. As we move on without these precious members, let's cherish the memories of their wonderful personalities and celebrate their many contributions. Thank you all for coming today. Who would have guessed that for the second year in a row, we would be meeting virtually for our annual meeting. Hopefully we will see each other in person next year. As you might have read on Ollie.com, 
Since last fall, the reentry committee has been working on a plan for returning to in-person activities for all. Earlier this month, the executive committee approved a, a move to step two of our Stairway to Seven plan. This opens up outdoor activities with a few limitations. We're gonna to continue to follow the state and UGA guidelines, as well as the data from the CDC to determine when we will move further up the steps. Although we all wanna get back to face-to-face -to -face and in person, we must do so in a safe manner. The health and safety of our members remain our highest priority. We have much to look forward to in the coming year. We have a stellar summer program that has been scheduled from July 6th through August 5th with two classes per day at 10.30 in the morning and 1.30 in the afternoon. Double check that your membership is up to date and, does, and if it needs to be renewed in June, then go ahead and do it. So then you'll be able to sign up for one of these fabulous classes. The catalog will actually be posted online in June and registration will open up on July 1st. We're also, once again, we'll be offering our Summer Movie Fest for free on Friday afternoons beginning June 25th, with Bill Lochner leading, I'm sure, a very lively discussion at 2 p.m. While early fall classes will continue to be via Zoom, we're hoping to, to transition to in-person classes at Rivers Crossing when the data supports the move. We plan to continue to offer Zoom classes in some format for members who are unable to get to Rivers Crossing because of either mobility, health, location issues, or maybe just because of personal preference. We are looking forward to our SIGs beginning to reconnect and meet once again. Our hospitality committee will continue Zoom social events, but they're also working on scheduling some small outdoor gatherings in late June or early July, so be sure to check on Olicom for more information as we make more plans. Our volunteers are the lifeblood of Ollie. They spend many hours donating their time to Ollie, ensuring that we maintain a quality organization, as well as meeting the needs and interests of our members. I wanna thank our SIG leaders, our committee chairs, and our committee members for your commitment and service over this particularly challenging year. It has been very difficult recruiting new members to the committees, but they need your help more than ever. So please consider joining one of the committees. It's actually a great way to meet people and as well as develop some really extraordinary friendships. And maybe you know someone who could put on a class or maybe they have a background in finance or maybe they know of a better way to do something. We are very open to new and creative ideas that'll help Ollie continue to grow as well as meet the needs of our members. We are also so thankful for and lucky to have such an outstanding professional staff to support all. Thank you to our executive director, Tim Meehan, and the administrative staff, including Shelley McGruder, Amanda Nix, Ryan Robinson, and Rita Halen, who have performed their jobs in such unique and innovative ways throughout the pandemic. Their consistent support has been essential for Ollie at UGA surviving this most difficult year, probably the most difficult year since its inception more than 10 years ago. I also want to send a special thanks to our departing board members, Jim Alberts, Sherry Malone, and Bob Yorsick. They have each served four years on the board as well as participating in committees and being committee chairs. We're so thankful for all that they've contributed to OLLI and we look forward to them remaining active as OLLI members. And I also want to send a special thanks to our nominating committee that has been working since January, and they put together an outstanding slate of officers for the 2021 board. Thank you to Lois Allworth, Frida Giles, Andy Horn, and Chris Jones. We all need to give a huge thanks to Cher Snyder, our outgoing president. For the past year, she has spent countless hours working to make Ollie an organization that we can all be proud of. She has brought in new procedures to improve communication among committee and board members. She reorganized and updated our bylaws and procedures, refined our committees, trained multiple members on the use of Olicom, and much more. When Ali was struggling financially last year, Cher was instrumental in organizing the summer program for 2020, as well as the upcoming 2021 summer term. She's one of the hardest working and most committed people you will ever meet. Cher has pledged to Ali, so don't be surprised to see her still working on committees and supporting our initiatives even after completing her term in June. 
Finally, despite being a challenging year for all of us, Ali at UGA has remained strong and vital and ongoing. And it only happened because of your support, whether it was in the form of serving on a committee, presenting a class, attending classes, contributing to our annual fund, or simply renewing your annual membership. We can't make it without our members. So thank you so much for your support. On a personal note, I've learned so much from the many classes I've taken from Ali, but even more so, I've met some wonderful people while working on committees, attending classes, and participating in several SIGs. Please consider getting involved in a committee or SIG, and I promise you, you will be enriched by your experiences as well as the people you will meet. I am grateful for you allowing me the honor of serving as your president for the upcoming year. And I look forward to a year where we can begin to rebuild our SIGs restart our social events, and reconnect in person. Thank you, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Dawn, for sharing your vision of Ollie with us all. I look forward to your continued leadership and guidance and congratulate you on becoming Ollie's new president on July 1st. For those of you who'd like an instant replay, a link to this video recording of the meeting will be made available to you within the next 48 hours. In the meantime, if you have questions or you'd like more details about any of the information presented in today's meeting or in recent emails or other member of communications, Dawn, Tim and I are available to respond to you by phone or email. And we will provide you our contact information so that you can get in touch with us under separate cover. I want to also um, congratulate our award winners today, Ann Allen, Sherry Malone, Bill Loeffner, Jean Davis Blair, Adrian Helm, Madeline Van Dyke, Tom Buchanan, and Gary Whiting. We really appreciate your many contributions. Uh, you've really helped us thrive and stay alive this year, so thank you for, for everything you've done for us. And on that note, that concludes our 2021 annual meeting.